Okay. I'm just checking everything's good to go. Okay, kind of doing a second attempt here because last time I did a quick stream, only like 10 minutes, and then my microphone. I just bought a brand new microphone, it's a Samsung uh, Meteor mic, and it's not particularly f uh, expensive or fancy, but it's still an upgrade from the previous one I had, and the last one I had like was just making random noise, it was kind of annoying. So hopefully this will be better, but yeah, last stream I had to cancel it because I was uh, constantly in a red, and I don't know why. Okay, I'm getting a little bit already, but hopefully it's not going to be too bad. Okay, so I'm playing uh, The Hunter's Journal, Pale Harbor, and this is a game I've received on um, Steam Creator, so I'm going to write a review on it just after I'm done with this. And it's uh, something we just started recently, uh, kind of doing like a game review every day, and it's pretty cool. Uh, it's called uh, Amber, Works, Amber Works Reviews, if you want to check it out. I'll probably update it in my uh, description at the bottom. But yeah, for now I'm just going to check it out and hope you like it. It's kind of a weird game. It's like a horror and kind of like storytelling, but a bit of a D&D mixed to it or something. I haven't had any battles or anything, so I'm going to have to check it out. Okay, it's just a description and I'm going to start the game into intermediate. Uh, looks like my mouse position is better than the last time it was a bit wonky, so that's good. You are a hunter of beasts and monsters. A noble man or woman who chooses to fight corrupt beings wherever they can be found. It was your blade that finally slew the weir beasts of the Blighted Marsh. It was you who fired the bullet that ended the crawling horror of White Chapel. Your reputation through the United Imperial Colonies is one of steely determination and courage. As such, it was only natural that you received a telegram while relaxing in your club, informing you of terrible monsters that have driven an entire fishing community from their homes. It's pretty voice acted, which is cool. Finishing your scotch in a single gulp, you pay your tab on the off chance that you never return, and leave to the sound of your fellow hunters toasting to your success. Your driver returns you through the fog and growing twilight to your modest town apartment, where you pack your weapons and ammunition, as well as your sturdy breastplate and leather armor. With that done, you catch the next train to Falk's Wash the location marked in the telegram. This will surely be another test of your nerves and skill, but you are hardly daunted by the prospect. So yeah, at the bottom usually, sometimes like you go just go to the next page and sometimes there's like a bunch of different choices and it can drastically change of what happens next. Like you go to completely different areas or shops or whatever. So... Okay... The next. You step off the train at Falk's Wash and are greeted by anxious people milling about. The tiny hamlet is overflowing with refugees camping in the square and any other place they can pay to pitch a shoddy tent. You ask to be shown to someone in charge and are soon talking to the nervous looking mayor. I can only tell you what I myself have heard. He begins. A little over a fortnight ago, the fishing village of Pale Harbor was struck by a most violent storm. Many people were already without homes when monsters emerged from the surf and attacked. The menfolk defended as best as they could, but it seems the monsters were without number. He gestures out the window. They fled here. To bring word of the problem. Pearl Harbor is less than a two day walk from here, but we haven't seen hide in the hair of these monsters. D do you think they could be plotting something? You shake your head. In your experience, beasts rarely make plans more complex 
than the next meal or victim they intend to claim. Okay, I'll probably ask about beast thing like I did last time because I want to go. Uh, I just did. Uh, I got about that far with the shop, and that's about it. Let me actually see if I can actually move the window so you can uh, see the text properly. Oh, just a second. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hopefully, my everything's not cut off and looking properly. I'm getting a preview, so it should be okay. Uh, save the game. I like the little menu and save. It's like a little bookmark. That's kind of cool. It's a very different type of game that I'm used to, so kind of like it though. Uh, ask about the beast. The shows you into a side chamber where several elderly sea tanned men are seated you are introduced to the leaders of pale harbor these men can can answer your questions the mayor says before withdrawing you question the men for a long while about the monsters they saw they tell you of humanoid figures made of seaweed and bones some talk of the monsters having witch lights for eyes, while others describe them crawling in the mud like serpents. In the end, all they are able to agree on is that the monsters have a terrible smell of brine and decay about them that can turn even the stoutest stomach. Feeling that you have wasted most of your time, you thank them and gather your belongings. Hmm. I wonder, because I saw in the shop you can buy a few things, I wonder if there's anything that can help me knowing, like, maybe, you know, the these creatures, they have, like, a terrible smell, so maybe I should buy something. Uh, I'll, I'll have a check. You spend a refreshing night in the mayor's spare bedroom. It is the only house <laughs> in the place that is not packed with survivors of the monster attack, and for this, you are grateful. You arise early in the morning, donning your armor and tricorn hat. You load your pistol and slide your sword into the scabbard at your hip. As you step into the street, you see people turn and gawp at you. Someone gives a cheer, which soon grows into a ragged chorus that lifts your spirits. You can either head directly towards Pale Harbor, or you may spend some time checking the shops for equipment you may need. You could also speak with the townsfolk by the gate to see if they have any local knowledge to impart. Hmm. Okay, I'll check the shop before and I should be able to talk to the villagers, I think. Shopping. The general store has been stripped of a lot of building equipment and cloth to make the tent city for the refugees. However, the jolly store owner and his wife are happy to show you the remaining ways they have. What would you like to purchase? It's kind of sad. It kind of sounds like they had the item, like the, the shop pillage or something. I don't know what happened there. You say the, the, the store has been stripped. Okay. So I have 20 gold and you can even buy an encyclopedia of the beasts. So maybe I can learn like their weakness and stuff like that. Um, and I really like that it tells me on the side like what's a lot of the stuff too. Actually, it says right there, volume 4 of 15, beasts that swim and befile the oceans. Okay. I wonder like on the top left it says page 31. Like I wonder if there's like a... that many pages, like it goes up to like, I don't know, a couple of hundreds. And if there's like an order. That somehow you can figure it out and keep track, but that's way too much effort. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, filter mask, leather face mask that prevents breathing poison air. Like I know these guys smells bad, but is that gonna help in any way? I wonder. Uh, knapsack flares. Burn under the most circumstances. Coffee. Got a torch. He has a hand crank. That's kind of cool. So we're not going to worry at, uh, about batteries or anything like that. A sprig of tears of the lady. A flower supposed to bring good luck. 
Which is a lucky charm and a belt of we a belt for diving. Hmm. That's only two gold, so maybe I don't know if I should keep anything for like better weapons or whatever later on. I don't really know. This is kind of a very blind run, so I don't know what to expect. I think I'm gonna buy the mask, because it might sound useful. Like seems kinda creepy and I don't know. There might be a theme with just me. I'm buying the mask. I'm gonna buy I don't know if I have any torch or anything. I can look at my stats. Okay, I only have a mask. Uh I don't know. I can't ask anyone, there's no one in the chat right now. <laughs> it's like what should I do? But weight charms, uh hmm. Nah, that's gonna be too much for that the the encyclopedia. Why would I need weight for diving? I'm in a harbor. Screw it. I'm buying the weights and I'm buying the charms. Uh coffee, no, flares, no. Torch, yeah. I think. Buying a lot, but whatever. Now I'm gonna Go I got the yeah, okay, I bought it, so okay, cool. Now I'm gonna talk to the villagers. As you head out of town, you see a knot of Folkswash locals loitering near the gate. This will be your last chance to talk to them, so you approach and ask if they have any advice about the road ahead. A scarred farmer with a weather-worn face takes off his cap and addresses you. Well, if you're planning on taking the road, then your best bet is to stay away from better place. The other villagers nod. Been some strange tales of the banners since a young girl got herself in a family way. If you take my meaning, he adds, people going that way, sometime go messing, so they say. <laughs> and with the Reiners getting themselves hung for witchery, to save her camping in a ditch after dark. No you nod and smile before waving and heading off through the gate. You will soon see what dangers lie ahead and if they live up to that vague warning. Hmm. So, I'll probably li listen and avoid Banner's place. Um, what else? Did it say anything specific? That seems okay. A lot, a lot of the character, like, you know, the, the person's voice, which is cool. Kind of makes it a bit interesting. Adjusting your pack on your shoulder, you head out from the gate of Folk's Wash. A couple of men accompany you as far as the crossroads before directing you towards Pale Harbour. You know you have a ways to walk yet, however. The weather is pleasant and, after half a day's walk, you catch your first hint of salt in the air. As night approaches, you spy a barn by the side of the road. There could be a farmhouse nearby. Of course, you could always just camp by the roadside if you prefer. As it is still only dusk, you could keep walking in case you find something more inviting. Ooh, <laughs> this is actually kind of a tough one, because this, I don't know, they don't say anything about this uh, barn, so this could be Banner's place. And also I was just doing like a really quick test just to see what it was, and uh, just to make sure the game was fine and the sound and all that, to make sure my st streamer was ready, and I went to the barn and I think they killed me. So, yeah, kind of want to stay away from it, sounds kind of dodgy. And if I sleep here, I don't know, they might see like, oh, somebody's outside and they might uh, do something. So I think I'll press on. You decide to keep walking. Something about the state of the barn puts you in a weary mood. As you get closer, Way. you can see that it appears to be in a state of disrepair, which merely cements your decision. Of course, a while later, you find yourself slowly walking along in the dark squinting to see the path ahead of you. You will still have to find some way to spend the night. As you start thinking about camping right there, you see a light up ahead from what looks like a large building by the side of the road. 
It could be some sort of coaching in from the size. Alternatively, if you would rather not meet whoever lives there, you can squeeze into the ditch by the side of the road and spend the night there. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I can't actually remember. Like, this might be the inner that I died. Uh, uh, <laughs> what to do? I, I mean, I can only go in. I can't actually keep going. I have to sleep here or go in. Oh, no. Like, I wonder if there's any, like, subtle hint where, like, to show, like, in the image itself, like, maybe it was a banner's place or whatever. Like, it doesn't necessarily say in the text. I have to be careful of the image as well. That could be kind of interesting. Next, the way of uh, subtle storytelling. Oh man. Because I'm actually pretty sure this is where I died. Like, I kind of remember this place. So, maybe I should sleep here. Oh no. Okay, I'll just sleep here. Hope for the best. You wrap yourself in a blanket okay. and settle into the ditch by the side of the road to sleep. It is damp. A little smelly and very uncomfortable. Moreover, you have to keep your pistol and sword at hand as every snapping twig and night call of a distant animal puts you on edge. In the end, you spend very little time sleeping and more time twitching awake. The night leaves you drained and irritable. You yawn and pack away your blanket before heading on your way. You pass the coaching in and shrug your shoulders angrily as you imagine how soft the beds would have been <laughs> compared to the hard ground. Yeah, I thought I might have been dead. Well, to be fair, last time I did kind of almost purposely uh, drink a, like a, I really expected to be a, a drugged, like somebody drugged me, so like, I kind of figured, but I did it anyway. It's like, ah, oh, this friend doesn't matter, and I died. So like, well, uh, and in this case, like, I slept. I don't know if I needed it because I don't know if I used my stamina. I should check it actually, but I lost one stamina. So like, ah, uh, I was kind of relieved because I saw at the bottom left. That's kind of like in bold. It teaches you, or it shows you, sorry, uh, what happens in in summary. And at the bottom left, it says page 452. So I'm actually wondering if there is that many pages in the game to go through. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, lost one stamina. What does that mean? Uh, I wonder if I can use this item anywhere I want, actually. Or I have to use somewhere specific during a battle or special event. And I don't know about the stamina. Do I recover it? Like, just during the day, if I don't sleep, do I lose stamina? Or... Love to find out, I guess. As you walk on, you catch yourself yawning and shaking your head to keep awake. Your poor night's sleep is catching up with you already, dulling your edge. Oh no. With a shrug, you square your shoulders and keep marching towards Pale Harbor. Your growing fatigue sadly leaves you careless and sloppy when it comes to precise tasks. Especially combat. I lost one skill. So it says here, skill 8 out of 9. Again, don't know what it does. After passing a copse of windswept <clears throat> trees, you find yourself standing on a cliff overlooking the village of Pale Harbor. Beyond, there is a stretch of rust colored sand and then the expanse of the ocean. The oily water laps at the beach in the mid-afternoon sunshine. Jetties stretching out over the brine are surrounded by bobbing fishing vessels and dilapidated watercraft. In the deeper water beyond, there are various ironclad wrecks. This area was, you recall, the scene of vicious naval battles in some sort of trade war. Between the wrecks and leftover mines, fishing here is surely a dangerous prospect. In the distance, you spy a flash of sun on rust-free metal. It seems there may be a fresh wreck out there. In any case, you take out your spyglass and pan it over the village below. Pale Harbor consists of less than a dozen streets 
crossing a main road that leads from the largest of the jetties to the point you are standing upon. The houses are a mix of shoddy cottages, sturdy brick salting houses and smoking sheds. The town hall residence of the village elders is obvious, given its whitewashed facade and cupola tower. You look closer and see motion near one of the smaller houses. It does not appear to be a monster, but it's gone before you can get a good look. From here, you can either head into town or follow the cliff, looking for other routes down. You could also return a short distance and rest until nightfall, if you prefer. Hmm. I was just wondering, actually, like, when the people who made this game, like, how... Because I make a lot of mistakes when, when reading stuff, or even when speaking in general. So, like, I wonder how many takes do they have to do to, like, get everything right. <laughs> it sounds like a pain. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, if so I can follow the cliff... Head into town or wait. I'm not gonna wait. Probably. What town are they talking about? Uh, da -da -da -da. Hmm. I'm just gonna follow the cliff. You walk along the cliff top <clears throat> for some distance, occasionally checking the village with your spyglass to see if you can find more movement. Sadly, you do not. However, you do find a, a set of rusted iron rungs set into the cliff face, not too far away. It looks like there is a ladder leading to a series of ledges that run down to the town from this side of the cliff. Uh, so there's a ladder leading to a series of ledges that run down to the town from this side of the cliff. Uh, climb the ladder. With some trepidation, you climb down the ladder and reach the sandy ledge. It looks like there may have been another path here before erosion and time took its toll. You can follow this path to take you to town, or maybe explore the cliff face. Hmm. I mean, the game is uh, Pale Harbor, so I'm gonna stay on the cliffside. <laughs> you are about to give up. When you see that part of the cliff is actually a cave covered in a drapery of dry grasses and hanging moss. You brush this aside and peer into the gloom. Here we go. <laughs> it is too dark in the cave for you to see how far it goes. You can hear the sea echoing mournfully from the depths. So this may be worth investigating. I'm either going to die I don't think I'll just find nothing, or that'll be uh, maybe my first combat. So yeah, you can see my, I can use my dynamo torch. Uh, it's kind of like just a, a crank torch or something, so that's cool. I can use it as many times as I want, probably. I'll use it. You rev up the dynamo torch and click it on. It spreads a strong yellow glow through the inside of the cave. Hmm. It looks like it extends quite a ways into the cliff. Hopefully I'm not going to you meet take a few steps inside monsters. and can hear the sound of the sea getting stronger. Maybe it leads all of the way down to the ocean. It could also be a smuggler's cave and might hold something of value. Well, hell yeah, I'm exploring. <laughs> you oh. head into the cave. Oh, it becomes clear that this is not a natural formation. Maybe it was built by smugglers, or for some darker reason. You pass some small side tunnels, which you choose to ignore after shining your light down them. Many appear to be no more than long-forgotten caverns, with little more than driftwood and seaweed carpeting the floor. However, as you pass one, you hear... A scraping, slithering Seaweed sound. Serpent. Hmm. You wheel around just in time to see what looks like a serpent made out of damp seaweed rising up from the floor. You take a guard stance as the beast undulates towards you awkwardly. 
The stench of the thing washes over you, making you gag. If you do not have a filter mask, then reduce your skill by three for the duration of this combat. Okay, I do have a mask. Uh, uh, filter mask. I, I knew it was going to be something like that, like, you know, it might not be necessarily toxic, but it will help with, like, the, the stench of these bastards. He's quite strong, like, seven skills, I have eight. I don't know how it plays, but we fight. Don't have a choice. Maybe I should have saved. What, 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 what? What's happening? That, wait a minute. <laughs> I should like, be able to click. So, my details, serpent. Is this damage wise? Huh? I wish it was a bit clearer on what's happening there. Uh, I mean, it looks like I'm better at getting better roll. Oh. Round result. You win, your enemy loses two stamina. So it's like a battle of stamina? Like your stamina is your HP or something? It doesn't look like I lost anything. And uh, maybe like the, the lower the stamina, the less enemy accuracy there is. Uh, yeah, like a, it's not terrible, but like... It would be nice if I would be like, able to like throw my own roll. Maybe it would feel like I'm, like, like I'm the one who's throwing because I didn't click anything. I didn't do anything. It just kept going over and over again until the enemy died. So it would have been nice like if I'm able to just like even like I'm the one who clicks when it happens. It feels like I'm throwing the dice. Like a little small thing, but it would have been cool. Uh, and yeah, also that like, lets me see like what happens. You know, I didn't have time to read most of it. So. Uh, let me see if I can just check anything, so... Like, my roll says 6 plus 1 plus 8, which is my skill. Okay, that's kind of like... It improves my roll, so the skill, the stronger the skill, the stronger the enemy, essentially. Like, the more dangerous it is. And it adds the two dice with it. I don't know if any items or whatever would add skill, I'm assuming so. Uh, okay, amazing victory. Good, can't complain. I don't know if I got hit at all. Thing flops sideways as you hack madly at it with your sword. You do not stop until it lies still. <laughs> Poking at the detritus, you find shards of bone in the mess, but no meat or muscle, just weeds. It is a morbidly curious monster indeed. Hmm. So it's literally just a monster, like a little snake monster made of seaweed. Uh, shards of bone in the mess. Did it eat something or is it made out of bone fragments or something? Examine the body. You poke at the body with your sword before leaning in for a closer examination. Yeah. <laughs> to your horror, you find that beneath the weeds the monster had a human skull and spine. You even find a few stubs of ribs. The bones appear aged and rotted, but are smoothed over like stones on a beach. You stand up and shudder. Truly, this village is facing an unusual threat. Okay, well, I'm saving the one a good battle. You pass deeper into the caves and soon see daylight ahead. You emerge onto the beach a short distance away from the village. The cave you exit from is surrounded by brush and sand dunes, so it is unlikely to be seen from the streets of Pale Harbor itself. You can approach the village unseen from here, or you can wander on the beach. Hmm, I get too damn distracted easily, so <laughs> I'm like not always paying attention. Uh, the cave you exit from surrounded by brush and sand dunes, blah 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 blah. Can approach the village unseen or wander on the beach. There might be more stuff on the beach. I'll just stay for a little bit and see. You step onto the reeking oil stained sands of the beach. Patches of seaweed are lying in stinking profusion here and there. The tide is slowly rolling in, but you are well above the high tide mark here, you think. 
You take a moment to appreciate the melancholy sight of the sea of rust lapping against the dead hulls of the many ships in the graveyard. However, it soon weighs on you, and you turn to head towards the village. Yeah. I mean, it's a beach. I, like, I didn't really expect to find much. It's not going to be like, this is not an RPG. <laughs> You're not just going to find a random treasure. Like, like look, there's a treasure in like, the middle of nowhere. You sneak along the beach towards the closest house. There is a short, damp stone wall nearby, which clearly indicates the high tide mark. You are able to boost yourself over it and into the yard of the tumble-down hovel. Looking around, you see a flickering light in the grimy window of the house. However, you can also hear the sound uh -oh. of approaching footsteps. Okay, where am I exactly? So it's... Uh, some sort of wall, there was a house, the closest house. Ah. I don't want to be like waiting here and then if somebody sees me just waiting like secretly and like, what are you doing here? And just like looking weird. If I just gotta walk in casually and be like, oh, whatever. I'll just end. I don't have to enter the house and house and not just be like, knock on the door at least, you know, it's like, hey, I'm coming in and. <laughs> But, I'll do that. The front door of the house is unlocked, and you easily slip inside. You immediately notice a bedraggled figure rising from the floor as you enter. The man is wild and unkempt, with a long beard and glassy eyes. More false faces, he grunts, waving a poker at you. False faces, killing and feeding the sea. Well, you'll never have all Jenkins be gods. With that, he darts at you, raising the poker. Poker? <laughs> what? Huh? What? Uh... Is he attacking me, or what's happening? I thought just coming towards me, maybe looking at me, but not necessarily attacking, so... I want to try and talk, like, just a random person, you know, somebody's coming into his house. The man does not pause huh? as you try to explain what you are doing here. However, he appears to be half starved and, from the smell, probably drunk. It is no trouble for you to whip the poker out of his hand and pin him to the wall. You slowly explain to him who you are and what you are doing here. As the fog lifts from his eyes, he sobs quietly and clutches at your lapels. Lapel. <laughs> Soon, you have him calmed down. He agrees to remain quiet. As you let him go, he fishes out a bottle of alcohol from the trash on the floor and takes a swig. He offers it to you, and you hesitate for a moment before taking it. You find it prudent to wipe the lip of the bottle on your sleeve before taking a fortifying swig of the fiery liquid. To your credit, you do not choke on the brew before handing the bottle back to Jenkins. Uh, I don't know. I gain stamina. I mean, I guess maybe from the drink. <laughs> kind of weird. I'll ask him for information. Kind of sounds like he's seen stuff. False faces, he explains, waving a hand in front of his face. I stayed when the rest left. Nobody to go with. Nothing left for me but this place. So I let them leave. That's when the false faces came. He shakes his head. They were more like me. Fisher folk are stubborn as the sea we ply, Hunter. Some were got by the monsters. The false faces hunted the rest, stake them out in the waterline, and let the beasts have them. You ask why they have not come for him yet. He shrugs. On the edge of town. Not many of them come out this far. He finishes his drink and lets his head droop. It looks like he has chosen to meet his gods in a drunken haze. You thank him and make to leave. As you step outside, you see a flash of silver 
Nearby. Oh, silver. Sounds like another person. Not if you want it, because they made it of like seaweed and stuff. Uh, and then they carry bloody blades and sword. <laughs> that would suck. Uh, but yeah, it kind of sounds like the. I don't know, like the the main creature or the 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 boss or whatever might be towards this town or something. So they say, don't come at this far. Okay, I'm gonna investigate. You head towards the movement you saw. A figure in white robes with a silver mask suddenly bolts from a nearby yard and heads into the street at a dead run. Hmm. Chase or call out? I don't want to call out if there's going to be monsters nearby, so probably chase. Uh, white robes and a silver moss. White robes. No idea. You run after the figure. A sixth sense tells you not to call out. The robe shape turns to look as you pound over the slick cobbles and trips. The figure goes sprawling into a stack of empty barrels, although the shape regains its feet as you approach. It appears to be male, but it is swathed in white robes and bandages from head to foot. Over its face, it is wearing a silver mask cast in the likeness of a young man crowned with a coronet of serpents. You blink in shock as you recognize this as the face of Orthopede, the Cleansing Lord. You have no idea why any of his cultists would be here, as they usually stick to inner city charitable works. Without warning or sound, the man whips out a silver dagger and attacks. Uh, something fishy in the foot. <laughs> Doesn't seem very strong and a cultist ring white robe and something with a serpent which we just fought like a circlet of serpent right a coronet of serpent hmm well then I have a choice so save and fight it is <clears throat> okay we are I won that one even though I think we tied that was a really good perfect roll. Amazing. Uh, perfect. <laughs> so it looks like the enemy loses two stamina per hit or something. Only at six. That was a 100% victory. I think the accuracy then is like how often you roll better than the other person. So, uh, lawless. The cultist crumples, clutching a sucking chest wound. You move ah. to finish him off. <laughs> But before you can, he rams his dagger upwards, slamming it to the guard oh no. into his own throat. Oh, what? Even for a hardened beast hunter like yourself, this is a shocking turn of events. Why in the heck? What? Like, I want to say if I'm maybe trying to get him to talk, but says I'm trying to come in to finish him off, why would he just try to kill himself? And it's maybe didn't know, just trying to not take a chance and not talk because something weird is going on. Okay, well, examine. As soon as he finishes bleeding his last, you kneel and examine the cultist. Aside from the dagger, a pouch of medicinal herbs and a roll of bandages, he has nothing on him. You remove the mask, revealing a bloodied face, twisted by agony. The cultist was an average looking man with pale, puckered skin and pressure sores where the mask was worn for long periods of time. Scabbing lesions or possibly recent scarification covers his lips and cheeks. His mouth is partially open. You look inside and are shocked to find he has no tongue. Well. You check his arm, which was laid open during the fight. <coughs> Peeling back the sticky bandages shows that his flesh is laced through with thick green strands. You watch with revulsion as they twitch. You stagger back 
as his whole body convulses. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this is creepy. It's like something like snaky seaweed. You know, like snake. I don't know if like a. I'm gonna fight like some sort of giant snake monster. Uh. Phew, wait. I feel like moving the body is a mistake because, like, it is con convulsing. Uh, but I'm so curious, I want to know. <laughs> uh, like, he's dead, I'd say. Like, cut his own throat and, yeah, until it couldn't move anymore. Uh, yeah. Damn it, I'm so curious. But, yeah, I think I'm going to leave because I'm just going to take damage or whatever it is. You go to leave, only to hear approaching footsteps. Oh. You quickly dart into an alley between two buildings. From here, you can see most of the street, but not the fallen cultist. As you wait, two more orthopede cultists walk into view, although one of them is more shuffling or hopping. His leg is swollen so much that the pale flesh is bulging through the soiled bandages that cover it. It, too, is threaded with green streaks. As you watch, one of them peels free of his skin and waggles in the air like a tentacle. What the heck is happening? The two of them approach the fallen body, passing from your view. From the sounds of things, they may not hear if you were to escape now. But if you do remain, you could learn more about the threat you face. I mean, that's kind of what I'm here for, so... It's like, time to leave, go home, and just quit the game. Wait a while. You remain quiet, watching the street with your pistol and sword readied. From around the corner come strange ripping and dripping noises. Mm -hmm. After a few moments, the two cultists wander back into view, now accompanying a vaguely humanoid figure made from thick green weeds. The head of the creature lolls from side to side and pink, meaty bones push through the mass. The two cultists seem almost in awe of the monster as they head towards the town hall. You wait for them to pass, your mind reeling. Hmm. Let me return to the street. Er, watching the street. Well, I don't want to sneak away. I want to investigate. Uh, bu -bu -bu. There's some sort of like summoning ritual nonsense going on here. Return to the street. You slip back out into the street uh. and find a ghastly abattoir where the dead cultist had been lying is now just a crater of drying blood and scraps of cloth. His mask has been bent or twisted almost in half by some unguessable oh no. force. The nature of your enemy becomes clear to you now. There is some sort of terrible affliction in the area, a creeping plant or seaweed that can infect a living body and animate it after death or possibly control its movements in life, explaining the bizarre actions of the man you faced. But why would the cult of Orthopede be here and apparently collaborating in the spread of this vileness? As you look up, you notice the sun is sinking below the cliffs. It will be dark soon. I kind of don't want to be in a danger, danger zone. If I'm gonna go to sleep, uh... You have a number of buildings you can choose to hide in overnight. There is a comfortable looking house nearby, <clears throat> with the door hanging open. There is also a secure looking smoking shed, which seems to be stoutly built. You can also see a two-story building near the town hall, which may once have been a customs house. Hmm, two-story building. I'm not gonna go into the open house because, like, uh, comfortable home, custom, which, which is which now? 
Dang it. Uh, uh, comfortable looking house. Hang open. I don't want to do that because if I can't close it or something, people might sneak in on me. Uh, secure looking. Secure looking, but it's smoking. As in the chimney, I'm, I'm thinking. I don't know. Uh, hmm. Two story building near the town hall. Custom house. So it seems maybe empty because it's once I've been a customs house. So. Let's go to the home. The. No, wait. Smoking shed. You crack open the door to the smoking shed and make a face of disgust. <sighs> While the place seems secure, it reeks of old fish and stale smoke. You close the metal door behind you the smokehouse? and freeze as you hear a latch slip into place. Oh no. Praying to every merciful God you know, you turn and run your hand over the door. The latch is clearly on the outside for securing the valuable fish catch from animals and theft. And it is now closed and locked. You spend a fruitless couple of hours searching for a way out. The walls that had seemed so sturdy before are now your tomb. There is no easy way out. So in the end, you hammer on the metal door for release. The cultists soon hear the noise and come rushing. You are beaten senseless. And dragged to who knows where. Ah, damn. You awake later Mistake. with your hands bound behind your back and feet tightly tied together. A shaky voice nearby says, Welcome to Bale Arbor, stranger. Oh, no. Like the one thing I wanted to avoid happened. <laughs> Lost two stamina. That's not good. That's going to make me weaker. Well, stamina is basically your HP. And your skill is like your your strengths. So, yeah. Your companion introduces himself as Caleb, a fisherman who was out at sea when the village was evacuated. As your eyes get used to the darkness, you see he is bound and emaciated. Although unlike you, his hands are tied in front of him. He explains that you are in the cellar under the town hall. You ask what has happened. Tis them Orthopede churches, he says, his face grim. I were hiding in my house from the monsters when they came. Thought they were from the government, here to fix things. They weren't. Saw them dragging other folks away in the daylight. Feeding them to the beasts at night. He shakes his head. Some people like me, too stubborn to leave. And they all strung them up on the beach for the things. You ask him about the monsters, but he shakes his head again. No time. Turn round, stranger. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Turn around, does he have a way to like free me? Why would I refuse? I mean he's clearly like tied up or something with me, so it's been caught as well. Uh it says like the the town hall was it was underneath the town hall, so like if I did go to the town hall I would have been caught anyway, possibly. So uh, boy, boy, boy. And there's a beast that they're feeding us to that's not good. Well, turn my back. You turn your back to Caleb and feel something sharp being worked against your ropes. I'm too old and tired to escape, he mutters as he works the improvised shiv through the sturdy ropes. But a bold hunter like you should be able to avenge me and the village. With a snap, the ropes come undone and you flex your wrists. You untie your feet okay. and go to do the same for Caleb, but he waves you off. At least we free him, I mean. <laughs> take me to the beach, you see. I'll give you time to escape. Your gears 
All in the sack there. He gestures with his head. You start to argue, but hear the sound of footsteps approaching oh, no. the cellar steps. Imagine there's like a hidden timer that they'll choose for me or nothing happens. Like I get the bad option if I wait too long. Can grab your gear to fight. Oh no, my gear. So I can fight them or I can I can play dead. I thought I was like telling him to play dead, that would be kinda weird. <laughs> uh I don't wanna play dead, I don't know what that's gonna help. They're still gonna feed me to the damn thing, probably. Fight it is, probably. Maybe? Like did they just leave my gun and my sword like just nearby? Despite Caleb's protests, no. you fling yourself across the room to rummage in the sack for your weapons. The cellar door is opened, revealing a pair of masked, robed figures dressed like orthopede cultists at the top of the steps. You swing your pistol at them and pull the trigger, striking the first of them in the shoulder and sending him tumbling into the one behind. Before you can race up the stairs, the door is slammed shut and locked. You bang your shoulder on it, but to no avail. Impetuous fool, hisses Caleb. Now we're stuck uh, in here. Uh, 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 you freed me. The truth me. of the matter <laughs> is soon clear. The walls are thick wooden planks reinforced and waterproofed against seepage from the sea. There are no windows, and the door is stout and securely locked. Indeed, even as you chop at it with your sword, you hear furniture being dragged against it from the other side, and an hour or so later, planks being nailed in place to secure it further. Ah, uh, this sucks. Even with Caleb to help, you are trapped beyond hope of escape. He succumbs to starvation and infection the next day, and you end your life with a bullet three days afterward. <laughs> That's to avoid so harsh. The same fate. I am dead. Well, holy crap. I think that's gonna be my, my stream today. And yeah, I mean, I am dead, so what I'm gonna do? <laughs> if we get loaded, kind of go back a little earlier, which is cool, but uh, yeah, I'll do that another time. So, kind of wanted to give it a quick review, a quick check of this game. Kind of interesting. I kind of like the, the vibe of it. Uh, everything's fully voice acted, which is cool. I don't know if the pages are just for show, or if they actually are like. 450 pages worth of like uh, voice acting and all that. That's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the choice. It wasn't the best choice at the end there. Like, but it was quite difficult to understand where like how it would end. I mean, it kind of makes sense, you know, that like, you can't just like have everything turn out the way you wanted to. But I was expecting a fight <laughs> that did not end well. <laughs> uh, I think. I did get, get somebody, but the other person locked the door, and I'm screwed, so... Yeah. Kind of an interesting game. I didn't expect it to be like that. I've never played a game that's kind of like a storytelling book. A bit of a D&D feel to it. Uh, one thing, you know, I wish the combat was a little more interesting or showed a little bit differently. Uh, like, different dices or maybe even choices, like you can maybe attack with your pistol or with your sword. Or whatever, like a little bit of choice would have been cool, but other than that, it's not a bad. Like it's more of a story, I guess. Like you're kind of following more of a story. It's not about like fighting that much and all that. I do like the option in the shop though. Like you can buy things and maybe it will help you out later on. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I think that's gonna be it. It for me today. I might uh, play another game later. During the week, I mean, I did, I did get a new microphone so I can stream, stream a bit more often because my old one was kind of bad. So, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I am done today. I can't click away from my first screen because the audio will go away. Doesn't matter, does it? I don't know. And stream. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.